Hello everyone, welcome to Creative Civil Engineering Coach. This video is about BW SSB recruitment for Assistant Civil Engineer and this was a question paper asked in the year 2015. Question number 1. Web crippling generally occurs at a point where. So let's consider a symmetrical I section beam subjected to central concentrated load. So this is central concentrated load. So here you can observe at the junction of web and the flange there will be large bearing stresses concentration due to I concentrated load and the web near the portion of the stress concentration tends to fold or buckle and this effect is called as web buckling. So web buckling or web crippling generally occurs at a point when the concentrated load acts. Option A is the right answer. Question number 2. Crosstop is an instrument used for. Crosstop are particularly used for setting out right angles. Option C is the right answer. Particularly for measuring right angles, there are three types of crosstop. One is open crosstop, fringe crosstop, and adjustable crosstop. Question number three. A material is said to be perfectly elastic if. Material is said to be perfectly elastic when it regains its original shape on removal of the load which is also called as Hooke's law, which states that stress is directly proportional to strain. Therefore, stress is equal to Young's modulus of elasticity into strain. So, material is said to be perfectly elastic if it regains its original shape on the removal of load. Option A is the right answer. Question number 4. When the bubble of a level tube of a level remains central, it indicates line of sight is horizontal. Option A is the right answer. Line of sight is the sighting or pointing line of a telescope which is defined by the optical center of the objective and intersection of the crosshair. Question number 5. The discharge per meter width at the foot of spillway is 10 meter cube per second at a velocity of 20 meter per second. What would be the approximate tail water depth for a perfect free hydraulic jump occur at the foot of spillway? So we have to find the tail water depth which is given by the conjugate depth formula y2 by y1 is equal to 1 by 2 into minus 1 plus square root of 1 plus 8 into f square where f is the fraud number which is given by the formula viscous force divided by gravitational force initial water depth is equal to discharge by velocity Discharge is given as 10 meter cube per second and velocity is 20 meter per second. If you calculate this, the initial depth will be 0.5 meter. So, substituting this value, y2 is equal to 0.5 divided by 2 into minus 1 plus square root of 1 plus 8 into f is the fraud number. So, fraud number square can be written as v square divided by g into y1 therefore v square is 20 meters per second square divided by 9.81 into 0.5 on calculating this the tail water depth will be 6.14 meter so the nearest answer is option D 6.50 meter question number 6 work is defined as work occurs if there is a movement in the direction of force which is a scalar quantity so work is the product of force into distance option A is the right answer question number 7 beams which are composed of more than one material rigidly connected together so as to behave as one piece are known as composite beams option B is the right answer Composite beams are particularly used to increase the strength and stiffness. Composite beams are normally hot rolled or fabricated steel section that act compositely with slab. So the right answer is option B. Composite beams. Question number 8. Design of RCC cantilever beam is based on the resultant force at. So in a cantilever beam here you can observe the bending movement and shear force will be maximum at fixed end of a cantilever beam which means that resultant force will be always based on fixed end support. So option A is the right answer. Question number 9. The lateral earth pressure on a retaining wall is. 
Lateral earth pressure at any depth h below the soil stress is given by pressure is equal to coefficient of earth pressure into vertical stress at that point. So vertical stress at that point is given by unit weight of the soil into depth of a soil. So from this relation we can conclude lateral earth pressure on a retaining wall is directly proportional to depth of a soil. So option B is the right answer. It is proportional to depth of a soil. Question number 10. Stone used for ornamental work should be. Ornamental work means it is a decorative purpose. So for ornamental work the stone used should be preferably soft stone. Option A is the right answer. And the example for soft stone are granite and marble. So by using this type of the stone the decorative or ornamental work can be carried out. Question number 11. A flat slab is supported on. Flat slab is a two-way reinforced concrete slab that usually does not have beam and girders and in this type of the slab, the loads are transferred directly to the supporting concrete columns. So, flat slab is supported on columns monolithically built with slab. Option D is the right answer. Question number 12. Basic unit of thermodynamic temperature is. We know that temperature is usually measured with a thermometer which may be marked in several temperature scale such as Celsius, Kelvin and Fahrenheit. So among all these temperature scale units, the basic and SI unit of thermodynamic temperature is degree Kelvin. Option C is the right answer. Question number 13. If the loading on a pre-stressed rectangular beam is uniformly distributed, the tendon to be provided should be. So let's consider a rectangular pre-stressed concrete beam subjected to UDL load. So this is a rectangular concrete beam subjected to UDL load intensity of W kilo Newton per meter. So its tendon provided will be parabolic in profile with convexity downward. So its corresponding bending moment will be like this. Here in the given question it is asked about the nature of tendon provided. So it will be parabolic in shape with convexity downward. So the right answer is option B. Question number 14. Normally the foundation are placed below the ground level in order to increase. Foundation main purpose is to distribute the load of a superstructure to soil strata which in turn provide the stability to the structure. So option C is the right answer. It increases the stability of structure. Question number 15. Which factor influences the workability of the concrete without sacrificing the strength? In order to increase the workability of the concrete, fine aggregate, fine aggregate and quantity of the mixing water, mix, maximum size of the coarse aggregate and shape of the coarse aggregate will increase. But quantity of the mixing water will not increase the workability of the concrete without sacrificing the strength. So option B is the right answer. Question number 16. The distance between the two benchmark is 1000 meter. It is observed that during the leveling, the total error due to collimation, curvature and refraction is 0 0.120 meter. Given this, what is the magnitude of collimation error? Here the total error is given as 0 0.120 meter. We have to find the magnitude of only collimation error. We know that combined correction due to curvature and refraction is given by the formula minus 0 0.0673 d square where d is the horizontal distance between the two benchmark in kilometer so 0 0.0673 into 1 kilometer so 1 square so the combined correction is 0 0.0673 meter so to find the magnitude of the collimation error means it is Total error is 0 0.120 and error due to curvature and refraction is 0 0.0673. On solving this, the magnitude of the collimation error will be 0 0.0572 meter. So the right answer is option C. Question number 17. Which of the following cannot be used to improve the bearing capacity of soil? Among this following option, you can observe here. Watering surface of the soil will not improve the bearing capacity of soil because watering at the surface of the soil means it is the effect of water in the form of precipitation or irrigation which infiltrates the soil surface. 
So, watering surface of the soil will not increase the bearing capacity of soil. Question number 18. The pessimistic time of an activity is 20 days, optimistic time is 10 days and most likely time is 15 days. The expected time for an activity is. We know that expected time formula is given as optimistic time plus 4 times of most likely time plus pessimistic time divided by 6. So, expected time will be optimistic time is 10 days, most likely time is 15 days and pessimistic time is 20 days. On calculating this, the expected time of an activity will be 15 days. So, the right answer is option A. Question number 19. In the stone masonry, let the stone be so placed that their layers are parallel to the direction of the load. Then, then the natural bedding plane is normal to the direction of the pressure. They can easily split the stone and they are affected by the moisture. So, both options A and B are correct. Stones split easily and the stones are affected by moisture. Question number 20. A foundation rests on. Foundation base is subsoil and the surface of the earth leveled off to receive the foundation is subgrade. So, foundation rests on subgrade and foundation soil. Both the options are correct. So, the right answer is option D. Both B and C. Question number 21. An imagined line joining the points of equal elevation on the surface of the earth is called as contour line. Option B is the right answer. Question number 22. The content of the clay and silt in good brick earth is. In order to achieve a good brick earth, the percentage of clay and silt should be limited to 20%. Option A is the right answer. Question number 23. Which of the following item of the work not include in the estimation of plinth area? In order to estimate a plinth area, area of courtyard shall not be included. Option D is the right answer. Because courtyard area is another open space area. So, this shall not be included in the measurement of plinth area. Because plinth area is the covered built up area measured at the floor level of any story or at the floor level of the basement. Question number 24. The method of four poling in tunneling is generally used when? Four poling method of tunneling is generally used when the ground is in running condition. So, option C is the right answer. Question number 25. Lime containing high percentage of calcium oxide is generally called. When there is a high percentage of calcium oxide of 93 to 95%, it is generally called as fat lime. So option A is the right answer. Fat lime contains high or rich amount of calcium oxide so that there will be less impurities. Question number 26. Mastic asphalt is normally used for. Mastic asphalt is a mixture of bitumen, fine aggregate and filler in a suitable proportion which yield a voidless and impermeable mass. It is a very durable and completely impervious material and has a property of self-healing capacity of crack with bleeding. So, mastic asphalt is normally used for waterproofing. Option B is the right answer. Question number 27. The most commonly used solvent in oil paint is. For oil paint, the solvent used is most commonly of turpentine oil and the vehicle used for oil paint is linseed oil. So, the right answer is option C. Solvent used in oil paint is turpentine oil. Question number 28. Which of these will make timber more fire resistant? In order to make a timber more fire resistant, sir, able process will be used. Option B is the right answer. Because in this process, timber is cleaned and coated with a dilute solution of sodium silicate and then a cream of a slaked lime is applied and finally a paste of concentrated solution of silicate of soda is applied on the timber surface so that timber will be more fire resistant. Fire resistant of timber can also be enhanced by phosphate of ammonia, mixture of ammonium sulphate or phosphate and using borax and boric acid. So among this following option, the best suitable answer is Sir Abel process. Option B is the right answer. Question number 29. The maximum energy stored at elastic limit of a material is proof resilience. Option D is the right answer. Question number 30. The width of the flange of a T-beam should be less than least of a above three values. It should be one third of the effective span of T-beam, distance of between the center of T-beam, breadth of the rib plus 12 times the thickness of slab. So, width of the flange shall be least of the above three values. Option D is the right answer. Question number 31. 
Live load is Live load can be a temporary load in the form of movement of a load. For example, vehicles moving on the bridge may be considered as live load. So it varies in magnitude, position and it is expressed in un uniformly distributed load. So all these options are correct. So the right answer is option D. Question number 32. A plan of an area drawn with a original scale of 1 cm is equal to 10 meter has shrunk such that line originally 15 cm long on the plan measures now 13.5 cm. What is the new scale? So we have to find the new scale. It is given by the formula shrinkage factor into original scale. Shrinkage factor is 13.5 cm divided by 15 cm and original factor is and original factor is 1 by 10. On calculating this, the new scale will be 1 in 11.11. So the right answer is option A. 1 cm is equal to 11.11 .11 meter. Question 33. Which of the following type of the timber has maximum resistance against white ant? White ant affects lignin part of timber so that it will cause white color in the timber and this effect is also called as white rot. Among this following option, teak is an hardwood which possesses maximum resistance against white ant or termites. So option D is the right answer. Question number 34. Minimum water content at which the soil just begins to crumble when rolled into 3 mm in diameter is known as plastic limit. Option B is the right answer. The water content at which the soil sample will just begin to change from semi-solid state to plastic state, plastic state is known as plastic limit. Question number 35. The compaction of concrete improves. Compaction of concrete is the process of removing the entrapped air from a freshly placed concrete and packs the aggregate particles together so as to increase the density of concrete. So compaction mainly increase the density of concrete, strength of the concrete and durability of the concrete. So all these options are correct. So the right answer is option D. All of the above. Question number 36. Minimum water content at which the soil retains its liquid state and also possesses a small shearing strength against the flowing is known as liquid limit. Option A is the right answer. It is also defined as the state of transition from plastic state to liquid state. Question number 37. Which of the following statement is wrong with respect to effect of increase in temperature on a suspension bridge? So when there is an increase in effect of a temperature on a suspension bridge, the dip of the cable increases. This is true. Length of the cable increases. This is also true. Dip of the cable decreases. This statement is false because the dip of the cable will increase as the increase in the temperature of suspension bridge. So among this following option, option C is the right answer which is a false statement. Question number 38. The angle which an inclined surface makes with the horizontal when a body placed on it on the point of moving down is called as angle of repose. Option A is the right answer. It is the minimum angle that an inclined plane makes with the horizontal when a body placed on it just begins to slide down. Question number 39. Soundness of the cement is tested by lay chat layer apparatus. Option B is the right answer. Expansion of cement is usually measured by soundness test. Soundness means the ability to resist volume of the expansion and it is the indication of durability. It can be computed by lay chat layer method and autoclave method. Question number 40. The following are the steps that are involved in the making a spigot and socket joint of cast iron pipes used in water supply system. So the correct sequence of order in making a spigot and a socket joint is option C. 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. Question number 41. Stress is defined as. Stress is defined as the resistance force acting per unit area of the cross section of body. It is also defined as applied load to the cross section area of the body which is denoted by sigma. So sigma is equal to load divided by area of the cross section. So it is force per unit area. Option A is the right answer. Question number 42. The horizontal angle between the true meridian and magnetic meridian at a place is called declination. Option A is the right answer. Magnetic meridian and true meridian at a place does not coincide. If the magnetic north is to the east of true north, it is said to be positive. And if magnetic north is to west of the true north, it is said to be 
नेगेटिव क्वेश्चन नंबर 43 द बाइंडिंग मटेरियल ऑफ अ मोटर इज मोटर मींस इट इज अ पेस्ट प्रिपेयर्ड बाय एडिंग अ रिक्वायर्ड क्वांटिटी ऑफ वाटर टू अ मिक्सचर ऑफ बाइंडिंग मटेरियल लाइक सीमेंट और लाइम एंड फाइन एग्रीगेट लाइक सैंड सो द बाइंडिंग मटेरियल ऑफ अ मोटर विल बी सीमेंट ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर 44 रॉक्स इन व्हिच क्ले प्रीडोमिनेंट्स आर कॉल्ड एज आर्जिलेसियस रॉक ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर 45 व्हाट इज द स्टेशन पॉइंटर यूज्ड फॉर Station pointer is a navigational instrument used in hydrographical survey to fix a point from three or more at trigonometric station by resection method. So, station pointer is used for plotting of surrounding in arbor area. Option A is the right answer. Question number forty-six. Which one of the following is the correct range of finest modulus of medium sand usable in preparing cement mortar? So, these are the finest modulus range. Fine sand range between. 2.2 to 2.6 medium sand range between 2.6 to 2.9 and coarse sand range between 2.9 to 3.2 so for finest modulus of medium sand means it is 2.6 to 2.9 option b is the right answer question number 47 the order of booking dimension is In booking dimension, the order shall be in the sequence of length, breadth, and height or depth or thickness. So, length, breadth, and height will be the correct sequence. Option A is the right answer. Question number forty-eight. Cement becomes unsound in the presence of sulfur, trioxide, lime, and magnesium. All these options are correct. So, the right answer is option D. All of these. Question number forty-nine. Refractory bricks are used for. Refractory bricks are made from fire clay. They are yellowish or light brown colored brick. These bricks have high melting points and act as a heat resisting barriers between high and low temperature zone. So the primary purpose of using refractory bricks are to resist high temperature which are seen in combustion chambers. So refractory bricks will be used in combustion chambers. Option D is the right answer. Question number fifty. The foundation in which the cantilever beam is provided to join the two footings is known as strap footing. Option B is the right answer. This type of the footing is adopted when a column is very close to the boundary line of the property line, and hence there is no provision to project footing beyond the column face. So, in such cases, cantilever strap beam will be provided. Option B is the right answer. Question number fifty-one: A floor constructed with three mm marble chips is known as terrazzo floor. Option B is the right answer. Question number fifty-two: A point load applied at the shear center induces pure bending. Option D is the right answer. Shear center is also called as center of twist. Shear center is a point through which the, if the external force passes through the section, will be subjected to bending only, and there will be no twisting of the section. So it will be subjected to bending and no torsion. So it affects only pure bending. Option D is the right answer. Question number fifty-three. The under surface of an arch is called as soffit. Option C is the right answer. A soffit is an under, underside part of an arch. It is a protective covering under the eaves of the house, or it is a surface of an arch seen from below. Question number fifty-four: The ratio of total elongation of a bar of uniform cross section produced under its own weight to the elongation produced by an external load equal to the weight of the bar is. Elongation produced under its own weight is half times of P L. Divided by A E, and elongation produced due to external load is P L by A E. So the required ratio will be delta L one divided by delta L two, which is equal to P L divided by two A E by P L divided by A E. So A E A E will be cancelled. PL PL will be cancelled, so the required ratio is one by two. Option B is the right answer. Question number fifty-five. A symmetrical I section is subjected to shear force. The maximum shear stress induced across the section is maximum at which location? So for a symmetrical I section beam, when it is subjected to shear force, the maximum shear stress will be acting at neutral axis, where the major portion will be carried out by web of the I section. Question number fifty-six. Arches in the form of masonry arch struck from more than four center are called augi arches. Option A is the right answer. 
An arch with two oge curves meeting at the apex is called oge arch. Upper curve is con concave and lower curve is convex. When two curves are linked together to form a shaped curve with more than four centers, these arches are usually confined to decoration and not used in arcade arches. Question number 57. Struts of a common wooden partition are Struts are the partition of door or window to which the shutter is attached. So for common window partition, they act as a vertical members. So it will be like this. This is mainly used for windows or doors. These are the vertical members. So the right answer is option A. It is a vertical wooden members. Question number 58. Which one of the following is the appropriate triaxial test to assess immediate stability of unloading problem? So in order to achieve for short term stability, it is mainly done by unconsolidated undrained test. Option C is the right answer. This is for short term stability. Consolidated drain test is done for long term stability of the structure and drainage is permitted during the self pressure stage and shear stage both. This test is most likely time consuming so it is a slow process and this is the fastest process of test. Question number 59. What is shingle? Shingle means it is a water bound pebble found usually along the beaches and natural water bodies. It is used as a roofing material surfacing the boundary walls and filling material. So shingle is a water bound pebbles. Option C is the right answer. Question number 60. In general, what is the standard size of masonry brick? Standard size of masonry brick is 20 cm by 10 cm by 10 cm. Option C is the right answer. Question number 61. Which of the following are the more fire resistant paint? More fire resistant paint is asbestos paint. Option C is the right answer. Asbestos is a fire resistant material because of its chemical property. It is a non flammable, non combustible and has high melting point of around 1600 degree Fahrenheit. Thus asbestos paint is the best fire resistant paint among all these above options. Question number 62. Pantograph is used for. Pantograph is an instrument used for reproducing the map either to enlarge or reduce. So it works on the principle of parallelogram. So pantograph is used for enlarging or reducing plan. Option C is the right answer. Question number 63. The thickness of the micron is. Micrometer is commonly known as micron which is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 meter. Option B is the right answer. We know that 1 micron is equal to 1 divided by 1000 mm. So to convert it into meter, 1 divided by 1000 into 1000 which is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 meter. So 1 micron is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 meter. Option B is the right answer. Question number 64. The maximum bending moment due to moving load on a simply supported beam occurs at under the load. Option C is the right answer. It is very close to the center of set of loads. Question number 65. The maximum area of the tension reinforcement in a beam should not exceed. As per IS 456-2000, maximum area of the tension reinforcement shall be limited to 4% of gross sectional area and minimum area of the tensile reinforcement shall be limited to AST divided by BD is equal to 0.85 divided by F5. So this is for minimum reinforcement and maximum reinforcement shall be limited to 4% of gross cross-sectional area. Question number 66. The portion of the brick cut across the width is called closer. Option B is the right answer. Question number 67. Which one of the following is correct? Option A. A static indeterminate structure is the one which cannot be analyzed at all. This statement is false because it can be analyzed. Option B. A statically indeterminate structure is the one which can be analyzed using Equation of static only. This statement is also false because it can be solved by using compatibility equations also. Option C. A statically indeterminate structure is the one which can be analyzed using equations of static and compatibility equations both. This statement is true. Option D. A statically indeterminate structure is the one which can be analyzed using equation of compatibility only. This statement is false. It can be also solved using static equations. So among this following option, the right answer is option C. Question number 68. An arch constructed with a finely dressed stone is known as Ashler arch. Option A is the right answer. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी नाइन इफ द एंगुलर मेजरमेंट्स ऑफ अ ट्रैवर्स आर मोर प्रिसाइज देन इट्स लीनियर मेजरमेंट बैलेंसिंग ऑफ द ट्रैवर्स इज डन बाय बाउड इट रूल ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी अ सीरीज ऑफ क्लोजली स्पेस कॉन्टोर लाइन रेप्रेजेंट्स सो दिस इज द नेचर ऑफ क्लोजली स्पेस कॉन्टोर प्रोफाइल एट अ हिल सो दिस इज हंड्रेड नाइंटी एटी सेवेंटी सिक्सटी सो दिस रेप्रेजेंट्स अ स्टीप स्लोप ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर सो वेन देर इज अ इक्वली स्पेस कॉन्टोर लाइन इट रेप्रेजेंट्स यूनिफॉर्म स्लोप सो दिस इज फॉर इक्वली स्पेस्ड कॉन्टोर लाइन्स क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी वन अल्टीमेट स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ सीमेंट इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय अल्टीमेट स्ट्रेंथ इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय डाई कैल्शियम सिलिकेट ऑप्शन बी इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी टू द डेप्थ ऑफ एन आर्च इज डिस्टेंस बिटवीन डेप्थ ऑफ द आर्च इज द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द इंट्रोडोस ऑफ एन आर्च टू द एक्सट्रोडोस ऑफ एन आर्च सो इट इज बिटवीन इंट्रोडोस एंड एक्सट्रोडोस ऑप्शन डी इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी थ्री एफ्लोरसेंस इन द सीमेंट इज कॉज ड्यू टू एक्सेस ऑफ आल्कलीस इट शुड बी लिमिटेड टू पॉइंट टू परसेंट टू वन परसेंट ऑफ सीमेंट एफ्लोरसेंस इज द वाइट पाउडर सब्सटेंस ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी फोर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द क्विकेस्ट टू रिएक्ट विद वाटर इन द सीमेंट अमॉन्ग दिस फॉलोइंग बो कॉम्पाउंड ट्राई कैल्शियम अल्यूमिनेट रिएक्ट क्विकली विद वाटर इन द सीमेंट ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर बिकॉज इट हैज आयर एफिनिटी टू वाटर एंड जनरेट्स मोर हीट इट इज ऑल्सो रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इनिशियल सेटिंग ऑफ द सीमेंट इट हैज आयर हीट ऑफ हाइड्रेशन क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी फाइव द रॉक्स विच आर फॉर्म ड्यू टू कूलिंग ऑफ मैग्मा एट अ कंसिडरेबल डेप्थ फ्रॉम अर्थ सर्फेस आर कॉल्ड प्लूटोनिक रॉक्स ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी सिक्स अ मेटालिक टेप इज मेड अप ऑफ मेटालिक टेप इज यूजली मेड अप ऑफ लेनिन which is light in weight and made up of varnished strip of waterproof linen interwoven with a small brass copper or bronze wire option b is the right answer question number 74 the branch of surveying in which both horizontal and vertical position of the point are determined by making instrumental observation is known as telemetry option c is the right answer it is also called as tachometry question number 78 The angle between the two plane mirrors of optical square is optical square works on the principle of reflection it is an instrument used to measure or setting out of right angles there are two mirrors placed vertically above the base at 45 degree to each other so the right answer is option c question number 79 correction for sag is correction for sag is always subtractive it is given by the formula minus w l square into l divided by 24 p square where wl is the weight of the tape suspended between the support w is the weight of the tape p is the pull applied in kg or newton and l is the length of tape so option b is the right answer correction for sag is always subtractive question number 80 galvanizing is a process of covering iron with a thin coat of zinc material in order to prevent from rusting so question number 81 which one of the following is correct among these following options statement c a determinant structure requires only static equilibrium equations for its analysis is true statement question number 82 the process of making a background rough before plastering is called hacking option a is the right answer question number 83 sandstone is sandstone is a type of sedimentary rock option a is the right answer sedimentary rocks are formed by the deposition and sedimentation and lithification of sediments over a time period So example for sedimentary rocks is sandstone. Option A is the right answer. Question number 84. Local attraction in compass surveying may exist due to Local attraction is the phenomenon by which a magnetic needle is constantly prevented to point towards the magnetic north which is caused by iron pipes, steel pipes, vehicles etc. which means that when there is a presence of magnetic substance near the instrument it undergoes local attraction. Option A is the right answer. Question number 85 the main constant of the fly ash is fly ash is a by product from burning pulverized coal in the electric power generating plants its main constituents consist of calcium oxide so among this following option aluminum oxide ferrous oxide and silica are the main constituent of fly ash so all these options are correct so the right answer is option d all of the above question number 86 geodetic survey is undertaken for Geodetic survey means it is a type of survey in which the curvature of earth is taken into consideration when the limit of survey is greater than 250 km square 
So this type of the survey is basically used for making a geothermal contouring maps. Option C is the right answer. Question number 87. What is the number of points of counterflexion in a simply supported beam carrying uniformly distributed load? So in the following figure you can observe a simply supported beam subjected to UDL load. This is a corresponding shear force diagram and bending movement diagram. In the bending movement diagram you, here you can observe there is no change in bending movement from positive to negative value. So the point of counterflexion in the simply supported beam subjected to UDL load will be zero. Option A is the right answer. There is no point of counterflexion since there is no change in bending movement from positive to negative value. Question number 88. Some structural members subjected to long time sustained load deform progressively with time especially at elevated temperature. What is a such phenomenon called? Such phenomenon are called creep. Option B is the right answer. Question number 89. The absolute maximum bending movement in a simply supported beam of a span length 20 meter due to moving UDL of 4 ton per meter spanning over 5 meter is. So let's draw a simply supported beam subjected to moving load. This is a moving UDL load of 4 ton per meter. Total length of the simply supported beam is 20 meter and the span of moving load is 5 meter. So its maximum absolute bending moment will be W A by 4 into L minus A by 2. So W is the intensity of the moving load 4 ton per meter. A is the spanning of moving load so it is 5 meter. L is the total length of simply supported beam 20 meter. A is 5 meter. On calculating this, the maximum absolute bending moment will be 87.5 ton per meter at the midpoint or center. So this maximum bending moment will be acting at the center of simply supported beam. So option C is the right answer. Question number 90. The deflection of any rectangular beam simply supported is we know that deflection for a simply supported beam of a rectangular section is directly proportional to weight acting on a simply supported beam and inversely proportional to area of the cross section of rectangular beam. So among this following option, option A directly proportional to its weight will be the correct answer. Question number 91. Which one of the following method is an approximate quick solution possible for frame subjected to transverse load? Option A. By cantilever or portal method, it is possible to approximate quick solution. Option A is the right answer. Question number 92. The two point problem and three point problem are the method of resection and orientation. Option B is the right answer. Resection is a method of plane table surveying in which the location of a plane table is unknown and the location of the plane table is determined by looking it into known points. Orientation is the operation of turning the table so that all the lines on the paper are parallel to the corresponding lines on the ground. Question number 93. Which one of the following statement is correct? Among this following option, option a and b are correct so the right answer is option d both a and b question number 94 the maximum tolerance in a 20 meter chain is as per is specification the maximum tolerance for 20 meter chain is plus or minus 5 mm option c is the right answer question number 95 exposed portion of vertical surface at right angles to doors or window frame are known as reveals option c is the right answer reveals are the area surrounding your window on both interior and exterior walls. Question number 96. Beaufort scale is used to determine. Beaufort scale is a scale used to measure wind speed. It is based on observation rather than accurate measurement. So it is not used to measure the strength of wind, winds, direction of winds and pollution level in the winds. It is particularly used to determine the wind speed. So none of the options are correct. So the right answer is option D. None of the above. Question 97. A circular shaft is subjected to bending movement MB and a twisting movement MT. What is the ratio of maximum shear stress to the maximum bending stress? We know that maximum shear stress is given by the formula 16 MT divided by pi d cube. And maximum bending stress is given by 32 MB divided by pi d cube. So the required ratio according to question is maximum shear stress divided by 
maximum bending stress so it is twisting moment divided by 2 times of bending moment so the right answer is mt divided by 2 mb is the right answer option c for question number 98 bitumen in solid state is called bitumen is a black dark colored viscous or solid cementitious substance which mainly consists of highly molecular weight of hydrocarbon derived from distillation of petroleum or natural asphalt so in a solid state bitumen will be asphalt option c is the right answer question number 99 to ensure uniform pressure distribution the thickness of the foundation is so in order to achieve uniform pressure distribution the thickness of the foundation should be decreased gradually towards the edge option d is the right answer because bending moment is highest at the column phase and decreases towards the edge so it makes uniform pressure distribution when the thickness of the foundation will be gradually decreasing towards the edge question number 100 which one of the following statement is true option a clay are more porous than sand because it has higher permeability factor so it undergoes more porous so this statement is a true statement option b pressure due to organic matter in a soil decreases the bearing capacity of soil this statement is also true because when there is a pressure due to organic matter the soil decreases the bearing capacity so among this following option both option a and option b are correct so the right answer is option c both a and b